in, just type in there saying, yes, you can hear me, and what are you having for lunch or for um, or a drink to accompany this. Cheers, Shahan. Took it into lunch. Hi, Jenny. <laughs> Enjoy listening to me, Lisa. Second time this week. Must be a glutton for punishment. Hi, Fiona. Thank you, Rhiannon. Excellent. Okay, looks like we've got uh, quite a few people on. Cheers, Ali. No bar here, Mike, unfortunately. I am in a hotel, but uh, strictly water and tea. Um, so I'm running this from, uh, I, I'm, I'm away from the office this week, so uh, I'm running this from sunny Bristol, although it was wet this morning. But we're going to uh, we're gonna get cracking, essentially. I'm just going to set my screen up. I've gone to a Mac in the last three weeks, so that's been a bit of a difference, a bit of a change for me. Um, so I'm just going to get... More cells are ready. Can you hear me now? Ryan having a few problems there. Hello, can you hear me now? Perfect, cheers, Gavin. Hi, Laura. Right, you can hear me. So I'm, sure I'm back there, brilliant. Okay. Perfect. Thank you very much. Right, we're going to uh, we're gonna get into this now and, uh, and have a run through. Okay. You've got no sound there, Ryan. That's interesting. Other people can hear it, though. Hmm. Maybe re re refresh that the videos appeared. Maybe you're on an old BBC computer, Ryan. I'll have to have a look at that. Yeah. Right, okay, I'm going to get cracking, guys, because um, we're a couple of minutes after now. Um, okay, so the MTD Readiness uh, Workshop. This will be run slightly differently. It is more of a workshop feel, so we'll ask questions as we're going through, um, and I will also um, be running through some questions some polls that we need to bring in id i've just picked that up is everyone is everyone anyone having problems with uh, sound right okay might be your connections guys Okay, guys, I'm going to keep going with this. I think it's individuals' uh, problems with uh, local configs. Okay, right, so this will be uh, run slightly differently on a, a workshop basic basis. Now, this will be recorded, so if there is a problem, you will be able to go back and, and re-review it. So get yourself ready, tools ready, get yourself in the right state, and try and rid the distractions, so your phone or anything like that, put it to the side, turn it over, this will be 35, 40 minutes that we're going to get stuck into some next steps for MTD. Okay. So we're going to go through, what do I hear from firms? Is MTD a big problem? Uh, current blockers for larger firms and where firms should be at the moment. And then we go through some questions at the end, okay? So the MTD task at the moment, UK-wide, um, there's currently about a million, 1.1 million businesses are in scope. Um, and um, uh, currently, there's a belief that about, around about 400,000 businesses don't know about um, about MTD based on a, an Intuit um, survey last month. Um, so there's there's um, seven months uh, left till MTD, and there's 159 working days. So essentially, at the moment, as UK wide, we've got about two and a half thousand business conversions to do for MTD to make them MTD compliant. Um, so essentially, we've got a lot of work to do in that space. So that's the effort across the UK. 
the capacity challenge um, is how much effort this is going to take in terms of hours, okay? So at the moment, we've got around 400,000 that we know we're going to be requiring some sort of MTD compliance. The average hour is around 8 to 11 hours of conversion time. Um, the total hours required based on that is 4.5 million. We've got about 628,000 hours a month to do, so we've got about 27,000 hours across the UK um, to to do of conversions. So we've got a massive task on our hand, and at the moment, there's not enough firms uh, taking a handle on their own part of this of this uh, problem that we have. So at the moment, as you can see, quite a, an issue there. Yes, Steve, this is being recorded, so you'll be able to come back and re-review this if you can't hear it properly. Um, so yeah, at the moment, MTD wide, there's a huge task. We have a big problem. Um, lots of um, lots of firms are. Oh, let me have a sorry guys let's see what this is I'm just going to switch something one second you might have to go back and, and, and check guys on yours um, not sure why you're having bad sound um, okay so that's the, that's the issue internally so how do you guys feel about you being MTD ready so we have um, a poll that you'll see in the, in the bottom there, which is um, the first poll we have is, do you have a plan in place for MTD in the started, finished, not even looked, worried about it, help? So if you put some polls in there, let's see what we've got there. See what people... Let's get those polls. How are they looking? Right, so most 70, yeah, quite a lot started. A uh, couple worried about it and help. Okay. Okay, so we'll give that a couple of seconds. So most people have started, which is really good to see. Okay, perfect. So let's move on. Okay, so what do I hear from firms at the moment? Don't know where to start. Got a bit of a plan for MTD. Um, but not comfortable to deliver, we're getting left behind, not making the most of technology, can't serve the clients as we want to, staff aren't engaging, uh, clients aren't engaging, thought we had it sorted, but now I'm not so sure. Um, okay, so on that now, guys, can you see um, what, in terms of from your particular firm, how are you, um, how are you dealing with that? How are you... When you're looking at that, are you seeing any of those one to eight? If you put your number in the chat box, one to eight, of which ones of those are, are specific to you? Two, okay, six, two, seven and eight, five, Okay, clients aren't engaging, interesting. Caroline every year, six, okay. Okay, so a range there. So we've got a lot of sixes which staff aren't engaging, that's interesting. Uh, seven clients aren't engaging. Okay, interesting numbers there, okay. Thanks a lot for, for partaking in that. So you can see what people are, are thinking there. So we're getting quite a few sixes uh, in that space there. Okay, interesting. Um, We'll come back, we're gonna run through some of these as well, okay. So firm levels at the moment that we see on, on the cloud journey is zero to three, uh, so not considering cloud systems, a will to use cloud systems, a partial horizontal platform in place, so I'll go through what a horizontal is in the next slide, but that's essentially your zero or re and receipt bank together. Uh, a level three is your horizontal in place where you start doing reporting, and then level four is one vertical mastered, so you're starting to move into the app stack world, Level five is multi-verticals, and level six is we're doing verticals on a different planet. Mm. So at the moment in this space, um, we need to see people at level three to be really moving at scale on this. Um, so just in your, in your numbers there, where do you feel you are uh, as a firm in sort of level zero to six? Um, so level one is you're just starting in it and, but not really got the traction. Level two is you've selected something like Receipt Bank or Auto Entry or Data Molina or HubDoc, which has come into it. Um, okay, so two and three, we're starting to see there. That's interesting. Three, okay, yeah, two to three. Okay, four, okay, four, okay. So what's interesting here, guys, is what you have to think about on this is 
if you've made the selection, but then how many it's clients have moved. So we'll go on to this later. But if you think you're at level two or three or four, how many of your clients have adopted the full receipt bank, zero, futurely, then an app stack on top? So just bear that in mind, how many of them, not if you've done a couple, but um, how many have you done in total? Is that a standard rollout for you now with your existing clients or new clients? So at the moment, level one, level two is where a lot of firms are based on numbers. So something there to, to think about. Um, so how big is your MTD task? So one thing we do need to work out is how many clients we have to move. Um, so at the moment we've got, um, for example here, 500 clients that are MTD impacted, 100 clients are, are compliant, and we've got 400 uh, which are still requiring an MTD compliance conversion. We've got seven months left. We've got 57 clients to consider and have some sort of compliance in place for um, next April before the penalty points start accumulating. So essentially there, you need to be thinking about that of your own numbers. Um, do you all have an idea of the numbers that you've got in terms of MTD impacted that you need to have something in place for? You can put that in the chat box if you do. Okay, 35. 120. Okay, so you can work out your stats as you've got the numbers. Um, yep, yeah, big number there from Juliet. Okay, stats being compiled at the moment. So lots of firms still can compile the stats. That really needs to be in place by September, those numbers. Um, I think if you're going to um, really have a chance of getting, getting to that point, Lisa's still trying to get the info. Okay. Um, so one of the big problems across the whole profession has actually been the quality of client data that firms hold. Um, it's very sporadic across different systems or just not up to date in one system. Um, so I would say, regardless of this MTD, you need to get that in place. If you if you struggle to get client data, you're going to need to know your clients in a much more granularity with the upcoming um, MTD um, phases that are going to be coming in the future. So bear that in mind as well. Okay, so also you need to work out what your current run rate is. So how many clients did you do in the last 24 months, in the last two years? This firm did the 100 and they done, uh, it worked out they'd done 4.2 a month. So they've got to convert, they've got to be you know, over 10 times better uh, in terms of conversion um, efficiency than, uh, than they are now. So bear, bear that in mind when you're looking, what have you previously done and what are you trying to get to now and how are you going to be 10 to 15 times better in, in this case for this firm? Okay, so you need to think about what yours are there. So then the conversion efforts. I mean, if you're looking to, to take hold and, and make this a real opportunity to get close to your clients and move them to cloud-type systems, we can start to look at this in a bit more detail. So we've got 400 clients, seven months left on an MTD. We've actually got 159 working days left. So we already know we need to do 57 a month, but how many is that a day? So again, client conversion per working days, 2.51. So you do need to look at how much how much you, that there's going to be and needs to be done there. So again, you need that number to be coming down. If you if you're not if you're doing used to doing four a month or ten a month, and now you've got to do two a day, how are you going to manage that increase and how is that going to be uh, managed by the whole firm, not not just the individual cloud team? But then the challenge, of course, is that there's a capacity challenge if you are trying to do this. So 400 clients, um, average hours taken to convert. 11 we've got sort of four and a half thousand hours there of conversion time and when we're talking about conversion you'll be saying oh, that's quite a lot for conversion but if you take into account the conversion the, the conversation around converting and uh, then actually scoping the conversion doing the actual conversion eyeballing it the system post conversion then the training um, and then any post support it's from firms that have done a few hundred of these types of conversions from the think tanks we ran earlier in the year is between eight and 11 hours. So I've given a worst case there, but for this particular firm, 400 conversions means that they need, based on 11 hours conversion, they need uh, 628 hours of conversion a month, which is about four and a half extra people. Um, so on a, on a daily basis, 27 hours of conversion work a day. So again, need to look at your own numbers. If you've got your own stats, you can work your own numbers out, but there's a, a formula that you can think about and take. So actually what the problem is, people talking, I've got a few hundred to do, that doesn't sound a lot. If you work out how many hours that's going to be, that's where there's a bit of an iceberg at the moment for firms. So bear that in mind when you're looking at how much you've got to do. 
So do you have this capacity available? Okay. Anyone got any differences on the conversion? Does, it, does the 11 hours seem high? Has anyone got it lower? Has anyone actually got any true stats that, they, that they've covered? Seems about right. Okay, sounds about right. So people think that's a fair amount. Yeah, I thought it was. 8 to 11 feels good. So, yep, Gavin as well. That's good. That's good. Good to see that people are feeling the same thing there. Excellent. Okay. And then the conversion revenue and risk. So one of the areas when I've spoke to partners and cloud teams is that if there is conversions and you are charging for conversions, whatever your average price is, there is a revenue to be made out. It's a one-off revenue in terms of taking your clients through this. So does everyone charge for conversions? Just put a yes or a no in, your, uh, in the chat box. No, okay. Yep, no, okay. No idea yet, right, okay. Yes, sometimes. So, so my advice to you is actually you should charge um, because you do need to um, cover this cost. In any, wor in any other world, if you upgrade or change to something, there's some sort of transition cost. Um, and also as well, you want to people to value the service that you're offering. Um, if there's no value to it, they don't really take too much, um, in my opinion, people don't start to partake in it. Uh, properly and fully commit to it. So uh, on average, I've got a Facebook group that we run. We, we do a sort of a quarterly check on, on on sort of conversion prices. And the most recent has been around 750 for a basic conversion. So do have a look at that. Now, there are some exceptions where it's a really good client. You get great fee. It's not worth chucking a 750 pound quote to them because you do very well out of them anyway. I get that. But there should be some sort of default pricing in order to convert because what it does for your sales process, your conversion process, is it kicks people out of the process that don't value a conversion. And if they're not paying for it, what's what's the what's the what's the, the commitment for them to actually make sure it is a, is a success. Um, so you do need to think about that as well. Now if you're not converting um, and, and, you, and you've got large numbers or any numbers to think about, one area also to think about is, is what's at risk. So this firm, for example, 400 clients in this space that they need to convert, average yearly fee of two and a half grand yearly fees. So the total amount of risk there was, was um, a million and then a 10 to 50% risk amount was 100,000. So what we're saying is if you don't take people through this and they ring up next year uh, unhappy that they, they can't file or they haven't been told about this or not taken through this, um, we, my prediction is there's going to be 10 to 15 percent where you either you'll give them conversion for free or you'll give them some sort of discount on the fee uh, for not taking them through that. So there's always a fee at risk. So again, you need to look at your own numbers there and see how that feels. Okay, but, but again, there's a revenue and a risk to this type of project. So if you've got to spend a bit more to get this done, you should actually get the, con you should, the conversion cost and the revenue from that should cover it. But if you don't do it, you're probably going to expect some sticky conversations and some fee reductions next year. So just bear that in mind. So has everyone sort of picked a platform at the moment? So when I'm talking about horizontal, collecting data, data Lino, auto entry receipt bank, hub doc, We've got QBO, Zero, Sage One, or Sage Business Cloud, whatever it's called now. Um, and then advising on the data, you've got Float, Futurely, Fluidly, Spotlight, Power BI. Um, and obviously, you can report out of the actual systems themselves, the, the account, cloud accounting systems. So that's what we call the horizontal. That's what every firm should have. Now, typically, what we will find is that there'll be high numbers of zeros, QBOs, or Sages, more zero and QBO in my experience, um, but there's not as many data money, no auto entry and receipt bank. Now, what that means is we're not adopting the tech in that space. Um, it means, so if you've got 100 on zero, but only 20 on auto entry receipt bank, we've still got 80 um, of those uh, zeros, for example, that we're still manually updating. It just doesn't make sense. That's not the way it should be. So that number should be high of, of linkage. So if there's 100 zeros, you want to see at least 80 receipt bank auto entry data Molino. That number should be higher. And the firms that are grown in this space, that number is high because they're getting more regular real-time data, which means they can advise in a more real-time manner. Uh, and then your floats, futurely, fluidly, all that become really useful because you've got more regular data. 
So something to think about in one of the numbers there. We talk about in the KPI shortly. And then here's an app stack that you might start to consider. So Pratt's Ignition, Go Proposal, and then we've got the, the, the invoice automation, Data Molino, Auto Entry, Receipt Bank, uh, QBO Zero, Sage One, um, Chase, Asitago, Fluidly, the reporting, then you've got Go Card, Stripe, Expensify. So that shouldn't be dissimilar, but that's what we're starting to see firms grow with. And obviously, other for larger firms have bigger systems, so they might have some sort of quoting tool that links in with a larger practice management system. But again, this is some of the areas that we're starting to see this sort of central sort of app stack start to appear. So identifying clients. Um, if you do need data segmentation, there's some of the standard areas you should consider. So client name, entity year end, business turnover, um, other income. And the reason we talk about other income is because that we, we do see that uh, the HMRC are going to be asking for more granular data, and one of them has already been indicated other income turnover from the first tranche of MTD, which didn't go ahead, where they're asking for property turnover. The sector industry is really good for when you start building app stacks further down the line. And then we also need current accounting method. If, if you've got multi-office, the office, who's the client manager, who's the partner, and what's the fees? That's really useful. If you can get that data in place, you've got a really good chance of making informed decisions about clients and who to spend time with and who not to. Additional data would be good if services bought and how often you, you talk to them and contact them, whether a once a year client or a monthly or quarterly client. So just useful to know that type of information. Second, final two, the PIA factor, pain loss factor, I spoke about it a lot. How much for pain is that client? So do you really value that client? Or more importantly, does the client value you? But secondly, how difficult is it to change that client? Are they on Sage DOS and want 10 years worth of data going across into a new cloud system? That's a difficult change. Are they open to change and actually happy that their spreadsheet can now go into something like Zero or QBO? Then that's an easier change. So what gets missed out, people do the, the, the quality of client, but don't do the quality of conversion. And that's where people start to lose, um, lose time and resource because they're spending time on, on poor uh, conversions. So if I was looking at this here, the client score there on the left-hand side, uh, high uh, one is poor, five is good. That's just the quality client. We really like them, want more of them. That's a five. The ones are that phone call comes or that email comes in. It's like, I don't want to take this and nobody wants to take it. So that's, the, that's an element you need to think about in terms of your client scoring. The conversion complexity, again, is five is good, one is poor. So if it's a client who's open-minded and happy to look at some new system uh, and work with you, um, and they're moving from a, res a relatively good source of data, that's a five. If it's somebody who's not open-minded, um, doesn't like new technology and doesn't want to take it, um, won't be open-minded, then it's probably a one. And that starts to give you a multiplier of those two. So the five by fives are the right client at the right, uh, 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 right type of client, easy to convert, should be a, a, an easy win. And uh, down to the 15s, that's where you start to spend the time. So if you've only got a, a certain amount of resource, you need to think about how you're going to score that. Your ones, your one to fives, you need to really need to work out whether they're going to be clients longer term, and even if they're going to, you're going to be able to take them through that process of uh, transition. So again, something to think about there. It's not just about the type of client, it's about the type of conversion, and you get that with more experience. Um, so, so that's something, again, to think about there. Is that anything that people have come across in terms of, um, you know, got, had some really good clients, but it's been poor conversions or actually poor clients and poor conversions? Because uh, that is a, a, a regular area that we see. And I think someone mentioned earlier that we are seeing where, where some clients don't engage. We'll have a look at the client score and see if it's something to do with what the type of client or we'll have a look at the conversion complexity because, again, those two things, it could be a really good client, but poor conversion complexity. Um, that's where it starts to be. You need to plan a bit more than to us. What happened is you've got a really good client on a poor conversion, really difficult conversion. All your time goes onto that client and you've got all those good clients who are easy to convert that are waiting at the back of the queue. So you do need to, to pick those up and think about that. Um, and also, yeah, so Ryan, exactly. Complex conversions are good for fees, but eat the time. I'd agree with that. Um, so yeah, but you really want to look at that and pick off your good clients, easy conversions, and work down the, the multiplier there. You'll start to talk in 15 to 25s, uh, and then you'll know who to spend the time on, because uh, that can get you motoring, and then you can build up the confidence on simple conversions, and then when the complex conversions come along, then you're, you've got more people who can start to partake in, in helping out. So something to think about there as well, okay? 
So implementation and communication planning is, a, is another area that we see um, no structure or little structure to how this is done. So once you've got a list of, of clients, um, year-end client ID, entity, accounting system, turnover sector, and then we've profiled it by year-end and the conversion scoring, we can start to then uh, have a, a communication schedule. So we make the client aware of MTD, we're scoping the MTD conversion, agree the plan and date, pre-conversion check, conversion completed, MTD compliant, great, we can have an ice cream. So it's just really something, there's gotta be a process. And what it should be, it should be a process by year end. So it could be that all the October year ends, you're gonna contact in April. So I'll go through that shortly. But you can do the same process for each new year end that's coming, and that means you can chunk up the work a little bit. Having said that, the year ends that we've seen most people wanting to do conversions at is March, April, December. So if that's the case for you, you might need to spread that out to sort of VAT quarter ends and things like that. So MTD info sent and expectation set. We're going to empty, uh, do the conversion scoping, set the date for conversion capture actions, and then convert the client. So just given a timeline, conversion date, six weeks, uh, 24 weeks before, send the information, 12 weeks before, talk to them about the conversion, and then six weeks before, go into deeper detail about the conversion, capture the actions that are required. So just putting some numbers on that, if it's 31st of October, I'd start sending that first set of data at the end of April. I'd then be into MTD conversion scoping now, and then we'd be setting the date and, and the actions that need to happen on both the firm side and the, and the client side in to make that a successful conversion. And obviously, these dates are, they can be moved and it's completely up to you how you do that, but there should be a process for communicating and implementing um, your movement and that's the if you don't have a uniform process it's going to be very hard to scale it if you do need to scale the numbers what you need to think about is who does that how they how you do it and when so if you've got a marketing team or a marketing company they could take up the first part the first stage for you and you just feed them the, the people who are involved in this quarter that you want to um, target or this month that you want to target but then who does the MTD conversion scope and is that something that the cloud team has to do or is it something you can spread across the client managers or whoever faces the clients and then who actually runs through the conversion in deeper detail and then who actually does the conversion so again with the capacity that we spoke about um, and the amount you've got to do it's a real area of setting up the process and understanding that now I've just I've got a we do a lot with Power BI and we take the data and start to, to chunk it up. So this is just an example. It'll be pretty small on your screen, but I've got uh, if you do Google um, data segmentation and Blue Hub, you'll see a three minute video which will cover this. I don't want to sell you Power BI, but this is just an example that for this firm here, we've got client partners across the top, and then each of the uh, year ends that they have, so we can see whose year ends is falling when. And then um, we've got a list of the different type of industries, so we can actually start to target some of them by industry. And then that pie chart there is actually the type of software we're on. So we can start to say, as this firm, we want to target everyone who's on, on manual or, or Excel um, who's in retail. And we're going to do a, a, a real um, relevant communication to them, and maybe we'll bring some of the apps in um, that will support EPOS or retail and things like that. So again, it's about getting really, really particular with the data, which means you can get really, really particular with, with how you communicate with them and, and who's gonna sort of bite and who isn't. And the other thing is, if, when you start doing this, we've seen some firms do this now, is they've started to bring on um, new clients who are taught who are who fit that i'm on i'm on excel and i'm also a retailer but i need some help so they're starting to pick up other firms clients who aren't offering that so it's not the fact they want to do it for mtd it's the fact they just want better systems um so again something to think about there uh, again as i say that's an area that you do need to to think about um certainly client data is so important and so helpful for making informed decisions so kpi reporting I was looking at this, and this is the basic one we like to work with on firms. So, 500 MTD clients. It could be digital clients, whatever. I'm just using MTD because we have a we have a deadline. So, for this client, they've got 100 on QBO Zero Stage One, some sort of MTD compliant software. The left hand side there, how many clients are using invoice automation? This is Receipt Bank, Auto Entry, Data Molino, HubDoc, whatever your choice at all is. We will we will relative we will normally see that it's around about 20 percent are using that. So for every 100 zeros, QBOs or Sage ones, you've got 80 which are still being manually input. It just doesn't make sense. If you want to scale this up, you need to make that around at least 80 out of the 100. 75 to 80 is where we're seeing firms start to scale this. 
Now, if you're thinking about the long term, is we want to start delivering advisory. So on the right hand side, I've got that number five. This is how many people we are we are talking to um, about their real time data. So out of the hundred, if we've only got twenty who are getting real time data or relatively real time data. We've only got five of those 20. We're actually delivering 25% of those 20 who are getting some sort of futurely spotlight fluidly, whatever your advisory tool is. Um, so as those numbers, the 20 starts to increase the eight, you start to see the, the advisory numbers increasing, but it's really important you get that zero QBO Sage and auto entry um, receipt bank hub doc date Molino world. You get that working correctly, salt and pepper close together because that's what the real time data is what we're all after to start to advise on. So again, area there to think about as you go forward. So those are the KPIs I would take as minimum. Um, the other KPI I might want to take, just one more I would be thinking of, is who are new clients and who are existing clients you've converted. Because we are seeing a trend where, client, where firms are spending more time converting new clients than actually looking at their own. And it may be they can replace some of them, but obviously they're, they're also leaving really good clients on the table and open to, open to other opportunities from other firms. This is just a tracking dashboard that you might you might think about, um, but again, just an example. I'm not going to go into too much detail on that, but essentially, 1,000 clients, 800 fit for cloud. Before there was an MTD deadline, we used to tell people how long it would take to convert. So you can see in the top right there, that's a six. So for that firm, it's going to take them six years based on their current run rate of conversions. I've had that up to 68, 73 years actually was the largest. Um, so before there was an end date of MTD, that's how we used to work out the numbers previously. So just an interesting point there to think about. So who have we helped in this space? So we've done app support, app strategy, cloud adoption strategy, client segmentation, NTD planning has been a big one the last two months uh, that we started to get involved with. So there's some firms there, not all, but just some of the firms that we, we've worked with the one-off projects or we work with regularly. Um, so just to give you an idea of, of who we're working with. So some smaller firms, some larger firms. Top tips from me, don't assume your clients will work to your time schedule. So one of the, this is the, one of the most interesting points for me is if that client, if you speak to me, Matt, at Blue Hub and say, right, Matt, you're going to move end of October, and I say no, what, what, what's the comeback for me? So the comeback should be is that the price I've given you, Matt, it works on the basis that we do it at year end. So I, I can commit to that price if you do it now, and I can commit to you being MTD compliant. If you don't do it at that time, I can't commit to the price, and I can't commit to you being MTD compliant because I guarantee most of you already got a backlog that you're looking at and that backlog is going to increase. So if, if I come back to you in February and say, right, I'll do this MTD compliance thing, um, there needs to be some sort of incentive for me to do it when the firm wants me to do it. So you need to be thinking about strong messaging to your clients and your staff who won't want to give that message. But absolutely, you need to say it's your time schedule. This is about getting you in the right, uh, in the right place and fit and ready for when MTDs hits. Don't let the tail wag the dog. So don't let clients or staff dictate this this the firm needs to be that this is the outcome we want and this is the process and the tools that we're going to use to get there and you've got to be strong that's the change management element which slips a lot so you've got to be really the firm has to be um really stating that this is the way we want to work and this is the end point and it's for me without doubt there will be points where there'll be collateral damage in terms of clients and or staff um, who don't want to go through this with you. And that's just the way it is. But there's a lot of certainly clients up for grabs. Uh, and you need staff with the right mindset because this is a changing world. Start today. Work out your current run rates uh, and your required run rates for MTD uh, so you know what you're up against. Think about your capacity as well. That's certainly an area you need to think about. Okay. So how much work do you have to do for, for MTD? So I've got another poll, which you'll see. The second poll in the poll area. Let's have a look. So we've got a few votes there. So uh, how much work do you have to do for MTD digital transformation? Um, it's a little tweaker will be fine. We've under underestimated this. We have work to do. I'm an accountant, get me out of here. So just go and update that. I'll give you a couple of, give you 10 seconds, 30 seconds to get into that. Okay. Some people changing their votes, I can see. <laughs> okay, good. So that's moving around a little bit there. So you can keep voting in the background there. Okay. So where should firm should be right now is understand the, the current firm position and with MTD, how many numbers you've got. You've got your platform, which is your zero QBO, Sage, your um, auto entry, receipt bank, 
date money and those types of systems. You should then have a client list profile by year end. Definitely the quality and if you can, the conversion scoring, that's going to give you an idea of who to spend time with and not spend time with. What's your engagement plan for speaking to these people? Who's going to do it? When are they going to do it? And how are they going to do it? Again, your implementation plan, who is doing it? How is it being done? And how is that being tracked through to ensure it's good quality? And how are you going to track this? What's the KPIs you're going to be, you'll be running? If you've got targets, I've got to do 20 this month. Would, that would be great if you can have it in the central area where you can see it's been updated. So whether that's your practice management system or a, a separate type of dashboard or even we've just seen whiteboards which have been used as a central point. You use somewhere which has been centrally reviewed and is in sight of everybody who's involved. If that's multi-office, you're going to have to do something online. If it's single office, uh, you know, maybe have a, an MTD war room, I don't know. But again, it needs to be somewhere there that you, you should think about. So what you need to think about as well is normal post-webinar actions, and I'm a big one for this, so I do quite a few webinars and seminars. People take notes, never return to them. I spoke to people I spoke to a year ago, and they said, oh, yeah, we did take all the information, we just haven't done anything. Uh, ask for a copy of the presentation, never open it. I get that quite a lot. Or they do open it and never re revisit it later on. Have an idea of what to do, but don't execute. Um, so, you know, come off this call, client calls or boss rings or whatever it might be, and we lose sight of this. Uh, the client internal priorities appear straight after the session. The momentum is lost, as I touched on there. Um, and think I'll book a strategy call or, or I'll, I'll talk about this in a few weeks and then don't. Because what happens is people go, well, I'm going to do something, and then I catch up with us three months later. It's like, oh, we haven't done anything. We haven't, we haven't made the progress we want to make. So whatever you do at the end of this, just make sure you do something which kicks off some progress. Now, I do offer some um, free strategy sessions at the end of this. It's a session to review the status of your firm's MTD and uh, digital project. We'll be looking at current position, platform, client list, engagement plan, implementation plan. Find out where your firm needs to be concentrating on for digital transformation. I've got 10 slots, uh, which I make available each month. I am going to, you'll see a green box show there, book a free session there. So you'll get those running through now. If you want to discuss anything that we've uh, touched on now, um, by all means, go and book yourself a slot. There's a few. I'm off next week, so there won't be any showing, and I'm quite busy the week after, but I have made a few available there if there's anything you want to go through. So that link will be there for the next 24 hours or so. Okay. I'll leave that green. So do we have any questions, guys? So anything around client data? Anything around how you're going to um, talk to clients? regarding staff too. The big thing actually with the staff, which is a point that somebody else made earlier about getting staff to engage, one of the main problems we see is staff are trained on this on this type of new way of working, but there's not a process um, which is implemented alongside it. So that makes it really difficult then for um, for firms to, to really adopt this. So you, whenever you're putting a new type of process or software, um, you do need to make sure there's an associated process alongside that. Secondly to that, um, I would be thinking that you do need to, every time there's a change in weekly or every other week, there should be updates as to how that change is going, whether that's a new process, a new tool, that gives people a chance to talk um, about any problems that are, are coming up. Okay. Well, I've had a couple of strategy calls booked, so that's great. Thank you very much. Um, I'll send an email out after this. Yeah, okay, so what I'll do, I'll send an email out, respond to me if you're looking for the presentation, and I'll drop it back. But like I said, don't don't get it and then don't revisit it. Make sure you use it. Oh, I've got a question here, actually. So uh, Rhiannon's asked there, uh, with regards to conversion, how are people converting clients while showing a negative view on MTD and real restriction to the boarding to a cloud system? So. If people don't want to go and do to do something, you can't make them do it. All you can do is offer the op option to do it. So if you're looking at that client and, and if you value them, 
um, you're going to have to maybe make it a, a very sort of managed plan from yourself, which will incur more cost to them to do it. If you don't value them and they're potentially painful or they just see you as a process you have to go through and there's no chance of delivering any value, that's going to be very, very difficult. So what I would be doing um, is really assessing if it's a good client or not. Is it a good client, Rian? Not sure if you could hear me there. But yeah, that's the type of thing really where we are. You do need to assess whether it, whether the, the client is worth going through that. Yeah, so I mean, if you've got a mixture of good clients and bad, spend time on the good clients and nurturing them through into what needs to be done. But again, if somebody even a good client and doesn't want to move, um, it's going to be really difficult for you to take them across that. Okay, um, and what the other thing I'll just just to finish off on that, Rhiannon. Don't forget, I've just said there's nearly half a million businesses out there who aren't being catered for, and we know there's about twenty five percent of firms who aren't engaged in MTD yet. So there's a lot of other clients up for grabs, even if your clients don't want to do it. Um, so do bear that in mind. Hi, right, Dan. Um, okay, how about softwares which are required for the client or Excel based? Are there bridging softwares available? So there is going to be bridging software available. Um, I believe there's one vendor who has it ava has it available, but apparently HMRC will not let anything be publicised or um, or be taken forward um, until there's at least two vendors who are who are offering uh, bridging software. Um, so bridging software will no doubt be available. We have no no idea how it's going to look and feel. And my issue with any new software, whether it's bridging or anything new that comes out in the intermediate, is you are going to be guinea pig testing that information, that system. So you're gonna be part of the beta testing when that's made available. Um, so to be perfectly honest, you just need to, um, personally, if, it's, if the client's pushing on it, then just tell them that it's gonna be available at some point, there's no guarantees how it's gonna work. But personally, I would pick your platform and try and get people onto that platform. Because ultimately, the, the bridging software is gonna be a short-term fix. If you've got aspirations about advising, you need real-time data, and this is where the cloud platform comes into play. So there will be bridging softwares available. you just gotta understand whether it's a, a place you really wanna play first in first testing it, be part of the first testing group, but secondly, how are you actually gonna give your clients any more value um, from a spreadsheet? I've got some more. Would you still recommend charging for a conversion when a full bookkeeping service, service is provided? Um, personally, yes. If it's, going to, if it's going to take you an amount of hours uh, to do that work and it, it's a different service that isn't in scope of the bookkeeping, uh, the only caveat to that is if, you know, the, the, if you're making really good margin out of them and you don't want to rock the boat by, by having to put something else into play, completely up to you as a, as a firm how you do that. But personally, yeah, I think it's an additional service converting them. Um, so there we are. That's that's where where we are. Uh, that's that's how I would consider uh, that. So it's depend on the client. But my default position, the advice to firms is put a charging um, structure in place for converting. As I say, seven fifty is a current rough for average. Um, what's your take on the soft landing for VAT, and would you use this to approach difficult clients differently? Well, ultimately, um, if you've got difficult clients who don't want to go with you um, and, and are going to make you um, have to do a different way of managing their data in order to be MTD compliant, that's going to be a new service with new costing. So, yeah, I, I would be saying there's going to be more charges because we have to manage you manually. We've got more manual work to do. Um, and ultimately, um, the soft landing, uh, you're going to get penalty points, really, aren't you, for a period of time, basically. So for businesses will be told they're not MTD compliant. And if you've told if you offered the service to the client, they can't come back to you. And if you've, if you've given them an option of, of ways of working, you're pretty much covered. Um, but if you haven't, that's the problem where they're going to come back and say, why haven't you told me about this? Why haven't you taken me through this? Um, so again, you do need to, to think about how you're going to manage that. But certainly if somebody wants to do manual and you're going to have to do a load of work to, to make them MTD compliant, then that's, that's definitely additional fees. Um, so yeah, would be a consideration. Um, 
Pat, how do you help accountants? Um, so essentially, Pat, I've been working with firms for about three years um, in different guises, but at the moment I'm working in more of a um, planning and cloud adoption, MTD um, and app adoption advisory space. So working pretty much as a cloud advisor to firms. So um, if you want to have a chat about that, you can uh, book a book in a call and run through that. But that's essentially how I'm helping firms at the moment. So sometimes it's individual projects. Sometimes it's uh, ongoing monthly just to keep things on track, keep things ticking over. And, um, you know, the ecosystem and the adoption of cloud is still something that hasn't been mastered by a lot of firms or the profession indeed. So uh, plenty, plenty there for, uh, for, for everybody to, to go and enjoy if they can get their platform sorted. Right. I think that leads us to the end there. I seem to have spoke a lot there. Sorry for those that had uh, problems with the, uh, the tech. It is recorded. It will be available for uh, about a week. Um, and I'll, you'll get an email after this, so just drop me an email back if you want to copy the presentation, uh, and I'll get that back. There's quite a few without having to scroll through all the chat and everything. Uh, it would be easier that way. So, um, yeah, brilliant. Uh, thanks a lot for your time. And um, let's just get this sorted. One sec. Thanks and good luck. Great stuff. Cheers, guys. Thanks a lot.